So this is question number one. I'm not going to lie to you, it tricked me a little bit, even though it shouldn't have. But um, I'm going to show you why Dr. Sullivan made it a little bit tricky and don't make the mistakes that I do. So that way everybody gets a good grade on the test. Okay, so it says, in the compression chamber of a diesel engine, the volume of a gas mixture initially at 27 degrees Celsius is compressed by a factor of 20. V final equals 1 20th V initial. If the pressure increases for one, from 1 atmosphere to 50 atmospheres, what is the final temperature? So it tells us that we originally have a pressure P1 equals 1 atmosphere, and then PF equals 50 atmospheres. It tells us that we have an initial volume, VI, which they just call VI, and the final volume, which is equal to 1 20th VI, and temperature 1 is equal to 27 degrees Celsius, and we're looking for the final temperature. So, we go back to our gas law that says P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. So we have an initial pressure, we have an initial volume, we have an initial temperature, and then we have a final volume and a final pressure. So we have all the information we need to find temperature 2. So the biggest uh, concern we have with this question is maybe you might get a little confused because there's no actual number for the volume, but you have to convert 27 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. So remember, 27 plus 273 is going to give us 300 Kelvin. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. So pressure 1 is equal to 1 atmosphere with an initial velocity of V1 over 300 Kelvin. Pressure 2 goes up to 50 atmospheres. And V2 is equal to 1 20th VI, or V1. And now we can solve for our final temperature. So right away we can go ahead and get rid of the initial velocities and just use the 1 20th as a factor. So we can go ahead and say 50 divided by 20 is equal to 2.5 over T2 is equal to 1 over 300 Kelvin. So if we do T2 equals 300 Kelvin times 2.5, we get 2 of 750 Kelvin. Now my mistake in this problem is I was looking everywhere for 750 as an answer because I wasn't paying attention to my units. That just goes to show you all the answer choices are in terms of degrees Celsius but you have to do the problem in terms of Kelvin when you're dealing with an ideal gas law. So to get our answer we do 750 minus 273 Kelvin to get back to Celsius, which gives you an answer of 477 degrees Celsius. So this question was actually fairly simple as long as you pay attention to the final units that Dr. Sullivan wanted it. So the biggest trick to this question was that you have to convert the original temperature into Kelvin to solve for the temperature in Kelvin for T2 and then he wanted your answer back in Celsius. So we just used P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2, and we went ahead and solved for T2, which is 477 degrees Celsius.